धृतः यत्अपि प्रलब्धः न ब्रह्म बंधुषु च वाम भगवन् अवग्न्या तुभ्यम् हरेहे च कुतः एव धृता व्रतेशु दक्ष उवाच भूयान अनुग्रह हो भवता कृतो में दंडस्पयामय भृतो यदपि प्रलब्धः न ब्रह्म बंधु शुचवाम भगवन वग्न्या तुभ्यम हरेश्च कुत एव धृत व्रतेशु दक्ष उवाच भूयान अनुग्रह अहो भवता कृतो मे दंडस्त्वयामय भृतो यदपि प्रलब्धः न ब्रह्म बंधु शुचवाम भगवन वग्न्या तुभ्यम हरेश कुत एव धृत व्रतेशु दक्ष उवाच भूयान अनुग्रह अहो भवता कृतो मे दंडस्पयामय भृतो यदपि प्रलब्धः न ब्रह्म बंधु शुचवाम भगवन वग्न्या तुभ्यम हरेश्च कुत एव धृत व्रतेशु दक्ष उवाच भूयान अनुग्रह अहो भवता कृतो मे दंडस्त्वया मै भृतो यदपि प्रलब्धः न ब्रह्म बंधु शुचवाम भगवन वग्या तुभ्यम हरेश कुत एव धृत व्रतेशु दक्ष उवाच भूयान अनुग्रह अहो भवता कुतो मे दंडस्त्वया मै भृतो यदपि प्रलब्धः ब्रह्म बंधु शुचवान भगवन नवज्ञा तुभ्यम हरेश कुत एव धृत व्रतेशु दक्ष उवाच नानुग्रह अहो भवता कृतो मे स्तरीय मई भृतो प्रलब्धः न ब्रह्म बंधु शुचवाम भगवन वग्न्या तो 
ब्रह्मेश कुत एव धृत व्रतेशु दक्ष उवाच ग्रह मे दंडस्वया मयि भृत यदि प्रलब्ध ब्रह्म बंधुशुचवा भगवन्न भवता कृत मे स्वया मयि भृत यदि प्रलब्ध ब्रह्म बंधुशुचवा भगवन अवज्ञाश कुत एव धृत व्रतेशु उवाच मनुग्रह अहोता कृत मे स्वया मयि भृत यदि प्रलब्ध ब्रह्म बंधुशुचवा भगवन अवज्ञाभ्यं हरेश कुत एव धृत व्रतेशु दक्ष किंग दक्ष Uvacha said, "Bhuyan, very great. Anugraha, favor. Aho, alas. Bhavata, by you. Kritaha, done. Me, upon me. Dandaha, punishment. Tvaya, by you." Mai, unto me, Bhritaha, done, Yat api, although, Pralabdhaha, defeated, Na, neither, Brahma bandhushu, unto an unqualified Brahmana, Cha, also, Vam, both of you, भगवन माय लॉर्ड अवज्ञा नेग्लिजेंस तुभ्यम ऑफ यू हरे हच ऑफ लॉर्ड विष्णु कुतः वेयर एव सर्टनली धृतव्रतेशु वन हु इज एंगेज्ड इन द परफॉर्मेंस of sacrifice translation and purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhupad king daksha said my dear lord shiva i committed a great offense against you but you are so kind that instead of withdrawing your mercy you have done me a great favor by punishing me you and lord vishnu never neglect even useless unqualified brahmanas why then should you neglect me who am engaged in performing sacrifices purport although daksha felt defeated he knew that his punishment was simply the great mercy of lord shiva he remembered that lord shiva and lord vishnu are never neglectful of the brahmanas even though the brahmanas are sometimes unqualified according to vedic civilization a descendant of a brahmana family should never be heavily punished 
This was exemplified in Arjuna's treatment of Ashwatthama. Ashwatthama was a son of a great Brahmana, Dronacharya. And in spite of his having committed the great offense of killing all the sleeping sons of the Pandavas, for which he was condemned even by Lord Krishna, Arjuna excused him by not killing him because he happened to be the son of a Brahmana. The word Brahma Bandhushu used here is significant. Brahma Bandhu means a person who is born of a Brahmana father but whose activities are not up to the standard of the Brahmanas. Such a person is not a Brahmana but a Brahma Bandhu. Daksha proved himself to be a Brahma Bandhu. He was born of a great Brahmana father, Lord Brahma. But his treatment of Lord Shiva was not exactly Brahmanical. Therefore, he admitted that he was not a perfect Brahmana. Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu, however, are affectionate even to an imperfect Brahmana. Lord Shiva punished Daksha not as one does his enemy. Rather, he punished Daksha just to bring him to his senses so that he would know that he had done wrong. Daksha could understand this and he acknowledged the great mercy of Lord Krishna and Lord Shiva towards the fallen Brahmanas, including even himself. Although he was fallen, his vow was to execute the sacrifice, as is the duty of Brahmanas. And thus he began his prayers to Lord Shiva. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vande Aham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Shcha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gauratvushe Namaha Panchatatvatmakam Krishnam Bhaktarupa Svarupakam Bhaktavataram Bhaktakyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam Aradhyo Bhagavan Vrajeshatanayas Tadhama Vrindavanam Ramya Kachidupasana Vrajavadhu Varagenaya Kalpita Srimad Bhagavatam Pramana Mamalam Prema Pumartho Mahan Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhor Matamidam Tatradarahana Paraha He Krishna Karuna Sindha Dina Bandha Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta 
राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमामि हरि प्रिय जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Hare Krishna. I'm very happy to be here again in Radha Parthasarthi Mandir. It is very uncommon to find so many devotees for Srimad Bhagavatam class in most of our temples. So it is a great pleasure to see so many devotees gathered here for the Bhagavatam class. Srila Prabhupada, I'm sure, is beaming with happiness. He has come in his expanded form also to see all of you. And how nicely the devotees in Delhi are following his instructions. In these few chapters of the fourth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is much violence much warfare, much upheaval at a universal level. Our wars here are very small, are nothing. Where is that music coming from? Please, <laughs> please switch off your mobile phones. It is an offense to the Srimad Bhagavatam. Actually, when we are in Bhagavatam class, we should focus on the Bhagavatam. In Vrindavan, one time in the class, I announced that anybody whose phone rings will have to give 500 rupees donation to the class. And still two people's phone rung. But I took the donation and I gave it to the Goshala. So Daksha was a materialistic person even though he was a son of none other than Brahma, the original Brahmana. A Brahmana is not supposed to see things from a materialistic point of view. A Brahmana is supposed to be at the very least in the mode of goodness. Therefore his vision has to be spiritual. Unfortunately, because Daksha was so much preoccupied with the task of generating progeny for the universe to populate the universe, he lost sight of the spiritual principles and vision and he began to see things in a materialistic way. And because he was so powerful and prominent within the universe, he became proud. When one is proud, one expects respect from others. And if one doesn't get it, one becomes extremely offended and annoyed. Another symptom of pride is that one is not willing to offer respect to other people. That is very painful. It pinches a lot to have to offer respect to another person. So because Daksha was very proud and that was very unbecoming of a Brahmana, he should not have been so. A Brahmana should be very humble and should be situated in perfect knowledge. But because of his having lost the spiritual vision, he began to see everything and everyone from a materialistic point of view. So much so that he even saw Lord Shiva from a material point of view. Now, from the point of view of 
worldly relationships daksha was superior to lord shiva because daksha's daughter sati was married to lord shiva so therefore daksha was the father in law of lord shiva so father in law is like father so in the point of view of worldly relationships daksha was superior but shiva was superior in every other way merely because he was a son in law of daksha did not in any way indicate that shiva was inferior to daksha actually he was superior lord shiva is a very very misunderstood personality both by shaivites as well as by vaishnavas when nityananda prabhu went to south india in the course of his travels to holy places of pilgrimage he saw that the shaivites and the vaishnavites were quarreling with each other very much the vaishnavas was was saying lord vishnu is supreme and we will not accept anyone <clears throat> and uh, anyone else is supreme and they were condemning lord shiva and the shaivites on the other hand were proclaiming lord shiva as the supreme and were condemning lord Sh- vishnu so when nityananda prabhu went there and he saw all this he laughed because he saw that neither the vaishnavas those who were supposed to be vaishnavas and those who were shaivas they did not understand reality so lord shiva who is he very very important point i i was mentioning this a few days ago in another lecture one of our sanyasis i think purushottam maharaj he gave a very interesting definition of who is a vaishnava in the chaitanya charitamrita in the shrimad bhagavatam in the bhakti rasamrita sindhu and so on there are many different definitions and descriptions of a vaishnava but this definition given by maharaj was very interesting and i liked it very much and i'm sure you will also like it because it is so simple yet it is to the point he said a vaishnava is one who knows who is who <laughs> a true vaishnava is a one who knows who is who that means he knows who is supreme who is not supreme even in the supreme he knows who is krishna who is vishnu who is narasimha who is ram and what is their relationship then he knows who are the demigods amongst them what are their positions then how do they relate to the supreme lord who are the jivas who is radharani who are the other shakti tatvas who is durga who is shiva so vaishnava is one who knows all these things very clearly who is who so vaishnava true vaishnava is one who is situated in this understanding so lord shiva is all auspicious the very name shiva means all auspicious so there can be nothing inauspicious about lord shiva even though he may be smeared with crematorium ash he may have serpents around his neck and he may be always in the crematorium and with with uh, ghosts and hobgoblins and so on but he is always auspicious so this is an indication if somebody is considered all auspicious even though he is surrounded by ghosts and hobgoblins he is smearing his body with crematorium ash then we can imagine how powerful he must be how much of a great and exalted personality he must be so lord shiva is many personalities rolled into one he is a guna avatar of the supreme lord as 
Brahma is the guna avatar in the charge of the in charge of the mode of passion, rajaguna. Lord Vishnu is in charge of the mode of goodness, sattvaguna. Lord Shiva is the guna avatar in charge of the mode of ignorance. And his work begins not begins but is importantly at the time of destruction of the universe. and because he is in charge of the mode of ignorance he has to give shelter to all the living beings who are in the mode of ignorance and the foremost amongst those who are in the mode of ignorance are the ghosts of goblins bhoot preet pishach all these living entities so lord shiva gives them shelter he is so powerful and he is not affected by them rather because of his shelter they become purified so lord shiva out of his very merciful nature although it is very very troublesome for him has to be always with people in the mode of ignorance for their deliverance and we can see also that his worshippers are also like that many times like bhasma sura for example he got a benediction from lord shiva and he went to kill lord shiva himself and then lord shiva had to flee for his life and take shelter of lord vishnu and then lord vishnu brought him out of this predicament this difficult situation so lord shiva is very kind very compassionate to all kinds of fallen living beings he is an expansion of lord vishnu himself lord vishnu is in vaikuntha and there is a form of lord vishnu in vaikuntha called sadashiv who is a four armed lord vishnu form narayan form and from his expansion is shambhu as described by brahma in the brahma samhita and this shambhu then appears within all the lord all the universes as lord shiva and you have all heard this analogy many many times before kshiram yathad adhivikara vishesha yoga sanjayate nahi tatah prithak asti heto ho you have heard this example about how lord shiva and lord krishna they are like yogurt and milk if krishna is like milk lord shiva is like yogurt so the expansion of lord krishna the expansion of the expansion of the expansion kala of lord krishna who touches the mode of ignorance for the sake of dealing with it he is called lord shiva because as krishna he is never in touch with the three modes of material nature but when the when the supreme lord assumes the form of lord shiva then he is in touch with the material nature and therefore he is not quite in the same category as krishna or vishnu he is in a slightly lower category but he is not in the category of us jivas also even brahma is mostly a jiva an individual soul so lord shiva's category is in between he is neither fully bhagavan nor is he jiva so he is in a category by himself <clears throat> one category only for lord shiva so very very exalted is almost god and another very very important and probably the most important characteristic of lord shiva is that he is the great vaishnava nimna ganam yatha ganga devanam achyato yatha vaishnavanam yatha shambhu purananam idam tatha as the bhagavatam extols its own glories it mentions that this bhagavat purana is the chief amongst all the puranas just as ganga is the chief amongst the rivers krishna is the chief amongst the devas 
and Shambhu or Lord Shiva is the greatest among all the Vaishnavas. So Lord Shiva's special position is that he is a very, very exalted and pure devotee of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, for Vaishnavas, Lord Shiva is very worshipable. We should be careful never to offend Lord Shiva. At the same time, it is also not correct to accept Lord Shiva as the Supreme, above Krishna or even equal to Krishna. Srila Prabhupada explains that that would be an offense to even Lord Shiva. Because when you glorify someone more than his position, then that is like an insult. For example, if you have led a nice kirtan and I appreciate you and say, Prabhu, you led very nice kirtan. If I say it from my heart, then you will feel very nice that there was some genuine appreciation. You will feel happy about it. But if I say, Prabhu, your kirtan, never in this universe has anybody sung kirtan like this in history. Never in the future in the history of this world will anyone sing kirtan like you. Na bhuto na bhavishyati. Then you will think something is wrong here. Then you will think I'm insulting you, I'm not praising you. So Srila Prabhupada explains that you should not praise somebody more than what he deserves. And especially if you do that to a, a very large degree, then you are actually offending that person. So Srila Prabhupada explains that to glorify Lord Shiva as being the supreme, even above Lord Krishna, is actually offending Lord Shiva. And not only that, Lord Shiva himself, being a great Vaishnav, feels very bad. Just like a devotee doesn't like to be glorified. What to speak of being told that he is God. Even Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was glorified as the Lord, he would close his ears and say, Vishnu, 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 don't say that a jiva is God. So Lord Shiva doesn't like it if he is glorified as being the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Nevertheless, the true Vaishnavas would never criticize Lord Shiva. Rather, we see in the Srimad Bhagavatam, time and time again, the glories of Lord Shiva have been described. So Daksha, unfortunately, could not understand all these facts about Lord Shiva. He only saw it from materialistic vision. He is my son-in-law. Therefore, he should stand up to respect me and so on. Similarly, as devotees, we may have our friends and we may have our families. Now, we should remember that this person is not simply my husband or my wife or my son or my father or my brother or sister or friend. But now this person is a Vaishnav. So, we should have that spirit of respect even though one may by worldly relationship be something else. One may be in a superior relationship in terms of this world, but if the other person is a Vaishnav, then we should be very careful. We should not see from materialistic vision like Daksha did. And Daksha's materialistic vision led to such drastic consequences. So much devastation happened because of Daksha. Eventually, you know the story of the last several chapters. Daksha insulted Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva went away from that place. And soon after, Daksha was about to perform a very large sacrificial ceremony. Deliberately, he did not invite his son-in-law and daughter the daughter Sati, however, insisted on going there despite Lord Shiva's warnings. When she went there, she was also not properly received by her father. She felt this is a great offense to my husband, Lord Shiva. 
so she gave up her body when lord shiva heard that her his wife had burnt her body and this is how the word sati comes by the way because she burnt up her own body so he was furious he came there with his associates and all hell broke loose <laughs> there was havoc over there in the daksha yagya eventually veer bhadra beheaded daksha veer bhadra is an associate of lord shiva he he beheaded daksha finally all the demigods in great panic approach lord brahma trahi trahi please protect us please save us from the wrath of lord shiva brahma said you should not have acted like this you have committed a great offense against an exalted personality like lord shiva so let us all go and beg forgiveness from him so they all went lord shiva is ashutosh he becomes pleased very fast in as much as he becomes angry very fast so when brahma who is actually by worldly relation his father not just father in law but his father but brahma came and spoke sweet words and requested daksh uh, lord shiva to become calm and and pacified then lord shiva agreed to brahma's request and restored daksha to life but with the head of a goat so daksha came back to life even though he had died in his earlier body but now he got a new body or rather a new head and when he opened his eyes the same consciousness came once again he saw lord shiva but this time by lord shiva's mercy daksha saw lord shiva with devotion with joy and not as earlier with envy and hatred and pride daksha very mercifully had been defeated and punished by lord shiva daksha took this punishment in the proper spirit he did not feel offended rather he understood the exalted nature of lord shiva and he accepted this punishment wholeheartedly as being for his own benefit and he said actually my dear lord shiva i committed a great offense against you but very mercifully you punished me in the previous two verses we have seen in a previous purport where prabhupad says gives a very important instruction he says that basically punishment can be because of two reasons one may try to, yes i will quote from the purport from text 2 there are two types of punishment one is that in which a conqueror imposes on an enemy and the other is that a father imposes on his son when a conqueror imposes punishment on an enemy that is out of ego out of hatred greed and so on but the punishment given by lord shiva to daksha was not like this it was out of compassion out of mercy out of love because daksha had this poison of envy and pride within him and lord shiva being all auspicious decided that this was not good for lord shiva of for daksha i beg your pardon therefore he relieved him of that poison of envy and pride and so on and daksha by shiva's mercy actually understands this very well now and he begs forgiveness and continues to beg his mercy please do not forget to bestow your mercy on me even though i am so unqualified in this verse he says therefore bhuyan anugraha bhavata krito me so you are very you have bestowed your mercy on me for which i am very grateful to you bhagavan vam bhagavan avajnatubhyam hareschya 
and actually you and lord vishnu tubhyam means of you and hari cha means you and lord krishna you are very merciful to even the most fallen people you never neglect to show your mercy even to the most unqualified people interestingly therefore daksha is now putting lord shiva and lord krishna in a similar category tubhyam harescha you and lord krishna meaning therefore that lord shiva also has qualities like that of lord krishna not only because he is an expansion of lord krishna but also because he is such an exalted devotee of krishna in the shrimad bhagavatam it is said yasyasti bhaktir bhagavata ya kanchana sarvair gunais tatra samasate surah harav bhaktasya kuto mahad guna manorathe nasati dhavato bahi this is a very famous verse in the 5th canto and it is said here that when one becomes a devotee of the lord a pure devotee who does not have anything else in his heart except the desire to serve lord krishna purely then for such a person all the good qualities of the demigods and the demigods themselves manifest within the body of that devotee but for one who is not a devotee of the lord what good qualities can there be manorathe nasati dhavato bahi because he is constantly running around on the chariot of the mind whimsically interestingly the acharyas have pointed out that when one becomes a pure devotee of krishna not only do all the pure qualities of the demigods come in that devotee but even the qualities of krishna come in that devotee because being a demigod is not such a big thing the pure devotee is actually greater than the demigods so to say that only the demigods good qualities come in the body of a devotee is not sufficient glorification of the devotee the pure devotees are actually superior to the demigods therefore the acharya is explain actually the good qualities of krishna come within that devotee qualitatively the jiva also can receive the qualities of krishna but in very minute quantity so therefore lord shiva manifest these wonderful qualities as an exalted devotee and an expansion of lord krishna and he is able to give com- his compassion to everyone in the chaitanya charitamrita shri chaitanya mahaprabhu explains ishwara swabhava bhaktir na lay aparadh alpa seva bahumani atma paryanta prasad he said the nature of the supreme lord is such bhaktir na lay aparadh he doesn't accept any uh, offenses even if his devotees commit towards him he neglects them ignores them alpa seva bahumani on the contrary if a devotee gives offers even a little bit of service then he accepts that as being something very great this is called urukarakah and this is specially applied to the month of kartik where you perform a little devotional service and krishna accepts that as huge so this is the nature of krishna that if we perform even a little devotional service krishna takes that as being very great so much so alpa seva bahumani atma paryanta prasad that he is willing to give himself up to the devotee such is the nature of krishna's obligation even when a little devotional service is performed by a devotee
Lord Shiva there for being such a great Vaishnava is reflecting these qualities of Lord Krishna and is able to forgive not take any offense to Daksha Lord Shiva did not bear any hatred to Daksha rather he was still very kind hearted and very compassionate in seeking his welfare and therefore Daksha understanding this began to glorify Lord Shiva so of course Lord Shiva is such a great personality it is not we do not have enough time to glorify because it is already nine o'clock but suffice it to say here at this time that Lord Shiva continued to bestow his mercy upon Daksha Daksha understood this point and with great faith and devotion began to glorify Lord Shiva and we will see these prayers in the verses to come Hare Krishna thank you so are there any questions? Yes. Mike somewhere. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for such a nice explanation about Lord Shiva. Just, uh, you know, uh, related to that, uh, we hear in uh, Chaitanya Leela, you know, that Advaita Acharya is... Uh, Sadashiv uh, is expansion of Sadashiv and Mahavishnu. So how do two personalities can come uh, merge into one particular this thing? And similarly there are many, a few other examples we hear. That is my doubt. Yes, Lord Shiva or rather Advaita Acharya is sometimes called an expansion of Mahavishnu and sometimes of Sadashiva, yes. It's a big topic not a good topic to discuss when everybody is hungry it will take time but suffice it to say that two personalities or even more than that residing in one person is not at all unusual we can see that many many personalities in Chaitanya Leela were combined personalities. These are called combined incarnations. Where there is a principal personality and then other personalities also join. Like Raman and the Raya was a combined personality of so many, incarnation of so many personalities. Each of them, many, many of such devotees. So this is quite an ordinary thing and quite commonplace on the transcendental platform. Okay? Yes, next please. Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, uh, you said this proud. Actually, so, uh, we, are, uh, uh, we have a uh, tendency like to uh, addicted to uh, be recognized, addicted to be. Uh, 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 desire that we have to be able to be able to be able to be to be to be impossible to come out of this desire. As uh, Daksha is such a great personality and many, many demigods also there. So how can I uh, understand that I can be get out of this uh, desire? So the question is that how can one become humble? How can one give up this sense of pride? Yes, Maharaj. Not an easy thing. There used to be one poet in Bengal and for many years he had been hearing about Vaishnavas. He didn't know exactly what they were. He just knew and heard that there are these Vaishnavas and they are devotees of Krishna. So he said, I had hoped for many days to become a devotee. So then he became a devotee. Or rather he started associating with Vaishnavas. And then he wrote one shloka, he wrote one verse, Bengali verse. Vaishnava Haur Mone Chilo Shad <coughs> Trinada Pishlok Shune Pode Galobad. Meaning, he said, for a long time I had harbored the desire to be a Vaishnav. I very much wanted to be a Vaishnav for a long time. 
But then I heard this verse, Trinadapi Suni Chena, and I said, forget it. Hamse nahi hoga. Not possible. But by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and the Vaishnavas and the holy name, anything is possible. So if we are living together in a humble spirit in the midst of devotees, yes, we can overcome this. Okay, yes. Yes, one question. Mike there, please. Piche Bhape. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for the wonderful class. Maharaj, uh, how can I understand that when you are saying that Krishna and Shiva were on the same position and when we say that Guru is also Sakshat Ritvena and then you also mention that pure devotees are superior to even demigods. So how do I reconcile these two things? It's a little confusing for me. Krishna and Shiva in same category? Well, as I explained, they are in different categories. Okay. There is Vishnu Tattva, okay. there is Shiva Tattva, okay, okay. there is Jiva Tattva. But in this verse, Daksha is placing them in a similar category in the sense that they are both very, very merciful, very kind. Okay. In that sense. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Yes, okay? Thank you, Maharaj. Yes. Thank you so Any much. other question? Yes, somebody here? Yeah. Okay. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you for explaining the difference between Sadashiv, Shambhu and Shiv. Maharaj, I wanted to know that... Speak into the mic, yeah. Uh, Maharaj, I wanted to know that how, what is the line of distinction between Sadashiv and Shambhu and where does Shambhu exist? Does he exist in the uh, spiritual world or in the material world? Does Shambhu exist in the spiritual world or in the material world? You know, there is a nice map of the entire creation that is published by BBT, I think. I see that map in many places. Beautiful map. It shows the material universes, the whole material world. Then it shows all the Vaikuntha planets and Golok Vrindavan. And in between, in a marginal position is Kailas, is Shiva Loka. So Shambhu is in the intermediate position between the spiritual world and the material world. Okay? So, Sadashiva, the original Sadashiva Vaikuntha is pure four-armed Narayan or Vishnu, Vishnu Tattva. But Shambhu is Shiva Tattva. He has come in touch. So, Lord Shambhu doesn't have some of the qualities that Lord Narayan has and Lord Krishna also, of course. One last question. Yes. Somebody here, whoever. Maharaj. Hare Krishna. What is the meaning of word Shiva? What is the meaning of Shiva? Yeah, as I explained in the beginning of the talk, Shiva means auspicious, Shubh, all auspicious. So on this auspicious note, let us now depart for another auspicious activity, <laughs> which is to honor Lord Krishna's prasadam. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Granth Raj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Gaur